Every now and then being part of the League partner program has its benefits. Riot doesn't always want to show us things ahead of time because that's how you get leaks. But a few days ago some members of the League partner program had a chance to play Neon Knights early. With Neon Knights being the TFT mid-set release for gizmos and gadgets. And so that's why I'm here. I will show you what I personally experienced and everything you need to know about this newest expansion for TFT. So strap up because you already know who we are going to meet. The official name for the expansion is Neon Knights. The story is, and I know, shocking, TFT has story, is that directly after the Progress Days, which was a mini event that happened during Gizmos and Gadgets, Project Abyssia invaded this world from the future to steal some of the old powers. I know it's not the most complex story, but hey, at least there is a reason for Project Abyssia to be there. We are in a universe where cute creatures summon portals all the time anyway. So now let's look at the actual content. When it comes to the legends, we should start calling them tacticians. Because tacticians include both the chibis and little legends. So this time around, the new mythic tactician is Project Abyssia. She looks pretty amazing, just like everything from Project. Almost everything. But by far, she's not the only one we're getting. Of course, because every expansion there is a new battle pass, this time around we are also getting a new little legend with that. Last time it was Professor Shisa and this time it is Social at Nixie. As always, you'll be able to get the first two levels through the battle pass and then you'll be able to buy the third level for star shards. And then of course we are also getting new eggs. Neon Knight eggs to be specific. Here we are getting new versions for Fenroar, Light Charger and Kiki. Fenroar is getting an Afterburner, a Bounty Hunter, Hextech, Pulsefire and Soda Pop. Light Charger is getting a Bubblegum, Groovy, Hextech, Pulsefire, and an amazing Hot Rod. And for Kiki we are getting Arcane, Electric, Groovy, Hextech with a top hat, and Pulsefire. Because all of them share Pulsefire, I think it's safe to say that's gonna be the legendary which you can't buy directly. But of course, no new content would be complete without new boards. The first one we got revealed in the Social at Nixie theme is the Toxitorium. It's a Zonite Chemtech Garden and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And the best part is, this is a reward from the Battle Pass. Yes, you still have to buy the Battle Pass, but it's still one of the best arenas yet. And what's awesome is that for free from the Battle Pass, in the same theme, you will also be getting a new sprite. The second arena is the Hextech Battle Arena. This one is not part of the battle pass, you have to buy it separately, but it has an insane amount of features. There is a custom announcer pack with it. And there it is! Victory for the whole team! In the corner there is a hologram that mimics the animations of your little legend. And when you look around, the scoreboards actually work too. Overall it is themed after the live esports arenas. And apparently if you click on the chairs, something special happens. And yes, if you've been paying attention to the previous cinematic, this is where Pengu and Chong battle out with their bots. Overall, this board looks really promising, so I hope it's not gonna be a ridiculous price again. But that's it for the cosmetics, so now on to gameplay. First of all, there is one important item that was removed. Guardian Angel. Partially, it's because Guardian Angel was quite unhealthy on some champions. You could kill Yone, but Yone would stay alive while his shadow kept killing people. But partially it is also because Guardian Angel was extremely buggy and making sure that some champions could or couldn't cast while they were dead constantly kept eating Riot's resources. So because it was better for them to not be constantly dealing with bugs, GA is gone. And instead we are getting Edge of Night. Functionally this item is very similar. You put it on your carry so that they are safe. When the unit that wears this item drops below 50% health, they go into stealth, cleanse all debuffs and gain attack speed. So just like Guardian Angel, it is a pretty good counter against assassins. Now a new feature that will be added into TFT is scouting. Not just clicking around and jumping between boards. You see, I wasn't aware of this, but apparently there was an add-on for TFT that could show you who you were more likely to face in the next round. Essentially the add-on was checking who you fought before and what's the percentage on who you are going to fight next. 
Riot recognized that this gave some people an advantage, so they are putting this feature into the game for everyone. The UI wasn't ready yet, so we didn't get to see it. But essentially, the UI will allow you to see what's the percentage chance on who you are going to fight next. As far as we know, this feature will not be there on launch. It will arrive sometime later. Next, we have to talk about Augments. They were by far the best addition to this game, and Riot recognized that. And they know they can make it better. So, here are some improvements. They changed a lot of the Augments to be less risky early on because most of the risky ones just end up being a bait. So now, if you pick a trade augment, which depends on you having certain units, you will always get one unit of that kind with it. So if you pick a mercenary trait, which is worthless if you have no mercenaries, you will also get a free gangplank with it. This is how all the trade augments should work now. A few traits were straight up removed. Prismatic Enforcer is not a thing anymore. That's how bad it was. It was so bad, it got removed. But of course, a few changes like these wouldn't be enough for an entire mid-set. So, they added in 80 new augments. Now, this number looks insane. But I wonder how much of this will be copy-pasted. I will talk about my play experience in a bit. But I noticed there were new augments that buff either your two backlines or your two frontlines. So at least four of those augments will be attack speed for backline, attack speed for frontline, defense for backline, and defense for frontline. I wonder how many more of these will there be. But regardless, 80 new augments should make it feel more fresh every game. You should stop seeing the same traits over and over again. Honestly, the more there is, the more interesting the game feels, because you are forced into making different decisions every game. We also got some quick examples of these augments. There is gain 3 random 3 cost champions. After casting, your units restore 10 mana. Units with items gain health and mana. Everyone is immune to CC for 12 seconds. You get one golden and one grey loot orb. Everyone's abilities can now critically strike. You can see whom you're going to fight next, and you get a zephyr. And lastly, your tactician heals 35 health, grows larger, and now has maximum 135 health. Once again, these were some of the more interesting examples. I hope the rest will not be repetitive. But now, let's move away from augments and let's have a look at the new traits. First of all, Debonair has arrived. Debonair works like Chosen in the Fates set. Basically, whenever you see a Debonair in the shop, there is a small chance they will be a VIP. And once you have at least 3 debonairs active, the VIP bonus, which is unique for every champion, will give them special abilities. For example, VIP Brand casts twice, and VIP Leona regenerates health. Funnily enough, on our podcast I did joke about the fact that Withered Rose looks like Debonair 3.0. We have essentially seen 4 different versions of Debonair. And now, with Debonair in TFT, it was confirmed that… yeah, they are. Next, there is Hextech. Hextech units get a shield every few seconds, and while the shield is active, they also get bonus damage. The more Hextech units you have, the stronger the shield will be, but also the more frequently you will get the shield. Getting Hextech active is insanely easy, so be ready to see this trait a lot. And lastly, there are Strikers, who gain bonus damage. But of course, there are also changes to other traits. Because we are getting more socialette units, one socialette will give you damage, two will give you mana, three will give you omnivamp, and at five socialette all the bonuses are doubled. And then there is rival, which is far more clever than people realize. You see, before we had sisters. This was a bonus for Jinx and Vi. When they were together, they would have a special ability. Well now, after Jinx and Vi grew up, they became rivals. And so now their bonus is only active if you have only one of them on the battlefield. If you have both of them, it gets deactivated. Just like the God Kings in the old set. This is clever because both units even use their current skins. Not the Arcane versions, because that's where they were young. That's why this is kinda clever. Jinx still gets the attack speed, but Vi, instead of bonus range, gets reduced mana. Now of course, with this set we got 20 new units. So I don't wanna talk about all of them, just the most memorable ones. The first new legendary champion is Silco. He looks pretty awesome, just like he does in Arcane, but be aware, 
his voiceover will arrive a bit later. His ability is pretty cool too. He injects Shimmer into a unit. That unit will deal incredible damage for a few seconds and then it explodes and deal damage around. He will also get mana to the units in front of him. It's really cool how he feels like a commander more than a fighter. Yes, he can deal some damage himself. He is throwing daggers, but his main ability is that he jabs someone with Shimmer and lets them deal all the damage and then explode. It's pretty close to how Silco would fight if he had to. The other new legendary is Zeri. Her attacks go through the target. That's pretty much it for all the new info, so let's talk about what happened to me. I managed to play a couple of games. Hextech was a bit overpowered, but that can be fixed. With 20 new units, it really did feel like a brand new set. Yordles feel interesting with Nar as their new Bruiser unit. Hextech units can be played in many different ways because their units dip into many different traits. Strikers are an interesting new opener besides something like challengers. And it feels like augments now have a way better variety. Hopefully it won't get repetitive quickly, even after the 80 new augments. On my very first game, I did well. I got an augment that buffed my backline, so I played assassins, which always do decently well in the early rounds. I saw a couple of Hextech units, I formed my team together, I got to the second place, and then I saw her. Walking in the carousel. Bearing a strange device of shimmering pink. A being I have never seen before. A sexy debonair champion. Yep, Renata Glask was real. To remind you, this happened a few days before we even got the website teasers. We'll talk about those in the next video. So, it was a really cool surprise and it came out of nowhere. Riot didn't tell us that she would be there. I assume she will be dropped onto PBE today, if not tomorrow. And her League of Legends version will be revealed as well. Unfortunately, yes, this means that this is not Corina Veraza. Even with all the connections to plants in this TFT mid-set. Honestly, visually, she looks like a really cool villain. She is selling perfumes, that's why she looks the way she does. The appearance makes sense, but I find it hilarious that visually it is a debonair champion and a somewhat of a sexy champion. She's not too sexy, but you know, they could have gone for an old woman. Give me the Queen of Thorns finally. Fun fact, to this day, League of Legends does not have a single visually old woman. Regardless, despite of this, she looks pretty good. I wonder what her story will say about her. Hopefully, she will finally set Shimmer into the core universe. All the things around her are purple. Don't tell me that's not Shimmer. Well, here I need to quickly mention one more thing. Since our preview, Riot did reveal the final version of Renata, together with her voice lines. And I have to say, they did make her look even older. And I'm really glad to see that. Before I was fine with her appearance, it was good. But now, even together with the voice lines, she's really good. So take what I said before with a pinch of salt. It was just a preview, and it is a proof that anything can be fine-tuned. And indeed, they did make her feel even older. But still, we don't really have a grandma in League. Now of course, after I gracefully picked up Renata from the carousel, I got my behind handed to me, because I destroyed my entire assassin comp just to get some footage. Whatever I built on her, don't do that, her poison dot does not stack. And a few moments later, I saw him, looking at me with his calculating eye. A beloved villain from a cinematic universe not so canon. Yeah, my team was horrible because Silco had no one to support. So I died two rounds later. But I saw him in action. Overall, TFT Giz Overall, TFT Gizmos and Gadgets was an incredible success. So of course, Neon Knights is going to continue on that. Right now, TFT is in the best place it has ever been. And I am so happy they embraced this roguelike mechanic. I'm also happy that TFT got its very first unique character. However, Riot Please stick to Runeterra. We got Silco here, so it would be awesome to see someone like Cythria. Or Raven. I know you mentioned that you would like to look outside of this universe for new units too. But we all know where this is heading. I don't think getting one-shotted with an operator is going to fit in next to Warwick. 